this is Dr. Ali Mugabe, and we're doing diversity and combining techniques. So let's start. Uh, we'll be using as a reference, we can use as a reference uh, the book by Andrea Goldsmith, Wireless Communication. Although the topic is well covered in other books, including Haken, Proekis, and others. So from Andrea Goldsmith, Chapter 7, it covers diversity. And we're going to focus specifically on the first three parts, realization and independent fading paths, recent uh, receiver diversity. We'll look at system model, selection combining, threshold combining, equal gain, maximum ratio combining. And then we'll, um, we, can, we can look at generalized combining. Then we'll look at transmit diversity, where we um, focus on the channel being known to the transmitter or the channel being unknown to the transmitter, where we use a Lamotti scheme. The objective at the end of this lecture, you, you must be able to describe realization to space, time, or uh, to space, time, and frequency diversity. Distinguish between linear combining, maximum ratio combining, selection combining, and equal gain combining. Draw block diagrams of combining schemes and determine the output signal to noise ratio. Numerically evaluate outage probability and average error probability for maximum ratio combining specifically. Explain the difference between array gain and diversity gain. The following figure shows an example of diversity at the, trans at the receiver side. So we are transmitting two signals here. The signal, we're transmitting one signal, sorry, here. It's U of T. The signal goes through two different paths. When the signal travels, it will be subject to path loss, shadowing, and then fast fading, multipath, and in addition to noise. If we are doing receiver diversity, which means we are having like two antennas at the receiver device, we expect that they are going to be a similar path loss and similar shadowing. But the small scale fading or fast fading will be different from one antenna to another antenna. So if we have multiple antennas, we expect to get different signal at different antennas. So the following shows the time and the signal level, and it shows how things vary with time. Diverse techniques are useful. Okay. Diverse techniques are useful assuming errors occur in reception when the attenuation is large. So if there is error with diversity, then one could be an error or what could have small amplitude or power, the other one would be strong. And if the channel is in deep fade, then there is a high or there's a good probability that other channels will not be at deep fade. If P is the probability of the channel to be in deep fade, and then we are transmitting over L different channels, then it means the probability that all of them are going to be in deep fade is going to be P raised to power L. And that's assuming that they are independent. Remember that some textbooks use M to represent the order of uh, diversity or the number of branches. Some others use L, for example. So we'll be using M or L to represent the number of branches. Types of diversity. Diversity, sending over different channels. We can have frequency diversity, which means we send over two different frequency bands and that's good when the separation between carrier frequencies is greater than the coherence bandwidth and we can also use time diversity when the separation between the, the transmission intervals that's we send at two different times but we have to make sure that we are sent at two different times that are greater than the coherence time Okay, we could also refer to the coherence time by TC, like in Andrea Goldsmith textbook. Uh, then we can guarantee some, some advantage. However, if we send a time less than the coherence time, then the two branches will be going over the same fate. An example of using time diversity is the repetition code. The repetition code is where you send the data or you send the bits multiple times. You just repeat yourself. So time diversity and frequency diversity could be related to coding and interleaving. Interleaving where we scramble the bits and rearrange them. We could, we could be 
we could do much better by of course doing a much powerful codes other than repetition codes because repetition codes are so primitive and we can also use burst error correcting codes instead of just spreading uh, the burst of our using interleaving. The, the details about coding would cover in different lectures, but just to link to our time diversity, that coding could be one, one sort of time diversity. We can also have space diversity, where multiple answers are spaced by 10 lambda, or any other reasonable fraction of lambda. Some would say only just 0 0.5 lambda or 0 0.38 lambda is enough to to make sure that those antennas are going to give you different signals. That's called space diversity, antenna diversity. Another way to classify, uh, another way to classify uh, the diversity, we can think of micro diversity, where we mitigate the effect of multipath fading. We can also have another type of diversity, which is called micro diversity. Oh, sorry, we have micro diversity, which mitigates a small effect. That's like having two antennas at the receiver side and the mobile set. We can also think of macro diversity where we mitigate the effect of shadowing buildings. And for example, if we have a mobile phone here, a mobile user, and we have different base stations. If you want to avoid a building, you could receive the same mobile from different base stations. And then those base stations need to coordinate with each other. That's a different classification of diversity techniques. We have we have micro diversity, where we think about mitigating the multipath. It's a micro because we are using small differences. Or we can have a macro diversity, where we have a big scale. We, we avoid the shadowing and building and so on. So the question now that we would like to, to consider is, and it could be another type a way of classifying diversity, is how are we going to combine the different branches? And what's the performance enhancement or change in accordance with this specific technique? We can distinguish somehow between array gain and diversity gain. Array gain is the signal to noise ratio increase in the absence of fading. So the fact that you have multiple receptions, this by itself is going to result in a gain, whether you have fading or not. This is called array gain. The gain as a result of going from a single to an array. In the absence of fading, with appropriate weights, there is an m-fold increase in the signal to noise ratio due to the coherent combining of the m signals received from the different antennas. That's the array gain. We can also define the diversity gain the diversity gain is the resulting performance improvement it's because of the differences. It comes as a result because of the differences between the branches. The resulting performance improvement due to more favorable distribution of gamma sigma, the resultant signal ratio, which leads to decrease in uh, symbol error rate, average symbol error rate. And we have also the outage probability as a result of diversity combining. Now, the diversity order indicates the slope of the average probability of error improvement. So for example, here, uh, as we increase the order, in many cases, we can write the simple error rate in something like this, where C is a constant. And it's, you'll find out that uh, it's inversely related to M. As we increase M, the probability decreases dramatically. And in the log scale, this will look like a slope difference. Okay, this will look like a slope difference. Once you take log, this will be a scaling factor. Analysis of different combining techniques. Assume that we are using L channels that are frequency non-selective, slow fading, and they are independent. So we're making the simplest assumption, frequency non-selective, slow fading, and they are independent. The received signal here, the received signal R, is the transmitted signal but because of fading, it's going to be scaled and phase shifted. So this is a path gain. And in addition to that, we're going to have additive wide Gaussian noise, whether to refer to this with Z or N. K, the subscript K, stands for the different channels we're going through. So the diversity order here is 
capital L. While, so we have K or L different received signals. M here is used to represent the different symbols. So capital M is representing the different symbols. Remember that in some books like Andre Goldsmith, we use capital M to represent the diversity order. In case of the binary, we have just two signals and then we have small m equal to one or two. The optimum modulator for the signal for the single for the signal received from the kth path uh, channel consists of two matched filters. Those matched filters are matched to the transmitted signal. That's in the case of binary, we have just two of them. Now for binary shift for phase shift keying the signals are just you know it's a phase shift keying so sk1 equal to minus sk2 and what one match filter could be used in this case a single channel transmission the match filter are compared and decision is being made we have to have some rule for decision based on the output of the different l channels there was some work by Burnham in 1959 and it's about uh, how do we combine these different channels so we speak about selective diversity equal gain diversity and maximum ratio combining diversity we have the maximum ratio combining to be the optimal technique among select selective diversity there is something called switching diversity and we're going to see all of this so maximum ratio combining will be analyzed first to make the analysis tractable we will we will make logical extension from our previous signal constellation, signal transmission analysis.